Hello and welcome to this video. Here I've written down the scope of this video and what we want to achieve. So because the question is tools, resources, prompts, when to use what? Because I also had this experience and feeling, hey, I can just use a MCP tool everywhere. Why should I even consider making a resource or a prompt at all? But I want to give you all the insights that I gained during the implementation of my MCP course so that you also have a better understanding about these primitives. So we will, this is the scope. First, we will recap the MCP primitives. So on a high level, on the surface, if you want to go deeper, make sure to subscribe my channel because I will release very soon my MCP course where we go into the detail of each of those. And then I will explain the difference on a real use case here of the setup that I've prepared for you on a customer support agent context of the com imaginary company called Technova. And I hope with this concrete use case, you get a better insight about the difference. So let's get started. So let's quickly recap about MCP and the primitives in there. And we really keep it here on the surface. So we have the goal of MCP is to bring custom knowledge that lives outside of a large language model. So everything in your business, your customer data, functionality, and so on, to bring this knowledge that lives outside in a standardized and good way into the context of a large language model. And we can do this with the help of the client and the server. So therefore, a representative client for the large language model makes a, a tool call, queries for resources, and interpolates prompts. And the server is there to expose the primitives, so the tools, resources, and prompts. And the tools, resources, and prompts are basically just like three primitives. It's so-called from Anthropic, but also you can think of like buckets, how we can organize our domain knowledge and functionality. So in terms for the functionality, we have tools, and tools are functions that are invoked by the model. This can be anything like an API call, database search tool, and so on. And these are model controlled, meaning that the model decides when to use a tool call or not. And therefore it's really important that when you define a tool, it has a really good descriptive description because based on that, the model decides to call your tool or not. The second thing are resources. So every time you deal with data, either it could be like static or dynamic, you use resources. And this can be any kind of resources and data because it can be like videos, images, binary data, text data, whatsoever. And resources are application controlled, meaning that the application decides when to use a resource or not. And it's depending on the application because on some applications, it's you need to explicitly select a resource, but from other, it can be based on the heuristic or some other smarter way. For example, here on Cloud Desktop, which is a application, we can use here the plus icon and then from here, wait, have here now my MCP server and here I can now select a resource. So a resource in term, this would be then now a log file, which is a resource. <laughs> <coughs> and I can explicitly select it here. And the last primitive are prompts. Prompts are predefined templates for AI interactions. So that we define a, a prompt and this prompt lives on the server side. Then from the client, we can interpolate this prompt, meaning from the client side, we can further inject some real values into this prompt. And then we get back this filled prompt on our client side, and then we can execute this prompt here because the intelligence live on the client side. So we can invoke this prompt with uh, for our large language model. And so what's the idea behind this is that our users don't need to be prompt engineers. Um, they simply just consume this prompt and have a good way to achieve their goal. And prompts are user controlled, meaning it's the user always explicitly select their prompt they want to work with. 
And so on the resource side, it was application controlled, meaning here it's depending on the application. Sometimes we need to really explicitly select it. Sometimes it's really smart and it's automatically done for us. But on the prompt, it's always user controlled. A user always explicitly select the prompt they want to work with. And here again, with Cloud Desktop, I can show you this. We open up here our Technova MCP server. And then also we have here this prompt, customer issue summary. And then I can provide here, so I can interpolate this prompt. I can provide the customer ID and the time span. Maybe let's say seven hours. And then I can add the prompt. And if I click in here, you see, wow. <laughs> here, this is what we injected. And we see this thing, everything comes from this predefined prompt. So with this knowledge in mind, Let's tackle the real use case to further explain the difference between a tool resource and a prompt. Let's go. Okay, so here's the big picture. We are working for Technova and we are our support agents and we are dealing with the growing ticket volume. And now we will use MCP with all their primitives to better understand the customer who's reaching out with their support tickets and to have like a context information about the customer and how their size, their volume and their problems. And then also further analyze the logs from the customer in a better way to resolve issues faster. So Technova organizes their tickets and user in a customer database, which is like a SQL database. You can see it here. We have here organized in this table, our support tickets. Here we have like the customer ID, the contact ID, the subject description, the status priority and the created date and also the resolve date. And in the others are like the subscriptions. So here we see the customer ID referenced and the plan they are for example, enterprise professional and how many seats. So this is the pen really important because based on the value of this customer, we need to respond in a more professional and quicker way than on the others, for example. And then of course we have then here our customers with their name, industry, size, and country, and the idea of course, and the contacts of each customer, we have a contact associated. When, for example, here, two, two times the same customer. So ACME having these two contacts defined. So once the CTO and also IT director. This is the setup of how Technova is organizing the users and the tickets. And then also we have like a system-wide app log, which captures from all customer the system-wide yeah, logs, uh, more in a info statement phase. And then also we have for each customer dedicated uh, the logs. So in the way it customized like customer underscore and then the ID of the customer where all the things are getting logged to. And usually people would like manually open this up, search for it, also like have a query on the database to see what's going on. And now I will show you the more improved, better way. So as I mentioned earlier, we will just fly over the functionality so, or even better, just, I would just show you the, the client side. So the real use case. So I'm opening up. So imagine we have now an angry email from our ACME customer saying that things are not working. And now I will use the first primitive. So I will use, make use of a two call to actually understand what's going on. So here, the first thing, make a tool call to get more information about a customer. And let's do this here. So I have an angry email from customer to me with ID is to me that their system is not working anymore. 
get more insights about that customer, please. And we see now that we are now using a tool because from the context, the large language model decided, okay, we need some information from a customer. I guess it would be good to use a tool. And this tool we defined here in the server and it's called the, where is it? Here, the generate support summary tool. And this gives me now a high level overview of what is going on. So based on this summary, I can see why a customer is angry. They are currently experiencing several significant issues, a critical authentication problem, preventing users from logging in after a recent update, a high priority API integration error affecting their Salesforce connection, a medium priority issue with user permissions. So if we have a look here on the database, this is exactly what's going on here. So because we see ACME, we have three tickets open here, API integration error, authentication failure, and user permission settings. Oh damn, what is going on here? So, and with this tool call, I have now a better understanding. This is an enterprise customer with 500 C, so these issues are likely affecting a large number um, of our users, given that all tickets are still open, we and created on the same day, this suggests a possible correlation between the issues. So we have now the information about the tickets, about the user itself, and we see that this is an important thing that we need to work on. Now, as a support agent, I would go here to the app doc logs and understand, try to understand what is actually going on. And then also further investigate here on the dedicated customer log. But here again, we are now using the improved way because now we will use resources to fetch and then pass to our LLM, which is in our case Claude Sonnet, to analyze the root cause. And again, we can do this based on the application. We can um, now select this. As I mentioned, in my case, I explicitly need to select this. So I've prepared it like here, logs. So if I now make this one here at logs, I specify the app log as a resource. So I really select, hey, I want this log, the system-wide log, and then it will be automatically fetched and then I can pass it down to the large language model. Analyze the system logs and help me identify what's going on on the customer ID 001. Okay, great. Logs analyzed. This is not found, this resource. Maybe I've add Hello. Ah, no. So you've seen I've written down just logs and we see we get in here the whole system logs and <laughs> sorry, now I can use it. Help me analyze the root cause of the problems of the customer with ID is uh, here are the logs and now we are adding the logs. Great. And let's see what Claude suggests here based on the logs that we passed down. The primary issue steps from an incomplete failed OAuth migration from version 2 to 1 from customer ACME. This is evident by the log entry 1. Okay, great. And what we can also now do, because this is the system wide log, and we have also like the, the customer logs, we can leverage another thing here. The dynamic resource templates. So because we could now for each customer set up a dedicated resource, but this is not good. So because every time a new customer comes in or go out, we need to define this resource in the MCP server, but we can like have a dynamic way of 
serving content with the content templates. As I mentioned earlier, I will not go into that deep, but in the course, but we can serve now the customer data related log. So here with this annotation. So, okay, interesting here are, wait, I will not make the same mistake as before. Let me check. Yep. So we have now here the customer log data. Interesting. Help me further analyze it with the dedicated customer logs. There you have. Okay, so let's see what Claude suggested here. The key issues are really like that an OAuth token is no longer supported. All user sessions were terminated due to off the version mismatch. Okay, access issues. Mm -hmm. The log suggests a system wide application upgrade that wasn't properly implemented or migrated, causing cascading failures across multiple services and integrations. So, this is now a significant incident, and we have used now the system logs and further the custom customer logs with the resources approach to give this information to the large language model. So, now I done the prompting myself and depending on the skill of each support agent on the prompt engineering, they achieve their goal in a better or not so good way. And here is that we can now leverage prompts. Prompts is, how can I say it? So let me show you this here on the server, because if I scroll down, you see it. So here we define the prompt that we provide to our support agents. And the nice thing is, that we also pass in here um, the, the log information because the prompt as well on the resources are available on the MCP server. And therefore we can really craft a really nice prompt where the first part of the prompt is like the log information and the second half of the prompt are like dedicated work instruction that are better organized than I've done this in this short example. So you see this prompt is very nice and gives us a much better approach to investigate. So with prompts, we have like a standard baseline of work instruction that we can give to our support agents to achieve their goal in an efficient way. So let me use this prompt and then I will show you how cool this is. Let me clear this up, run the client again. And I've also included here some examples that we can now use. So I will explicitly select the prompt. So we now have user control, we need to select it and interpolate them with the ID and time frame, like we've done it on a cloud desktop example. And now we can trigger this prompt. And uh, do we really want to run this prompt? Yes. And now we have this response here where we really see so the technical issues, the business impact and the resolution strategy. So technical issues, everything that we also investigated, but in a much cleaner, better way. The business impact. And also the resolution strategy. If we further scroll down, yep. So really in a structured way, we automatically pass in the logs that we need to resolve it. And yeah, so hopefully I can show it to you um, with this use case, the difference between tools, resources, and prompts. It helped me a lot for my side, having a real use case instead of just abstracting it away. And because the documentation at all is like, yeah, okay. But seeing this in a real use case gives me at least a better insight and also hopefully you. So if you want to learn more about MCP, as I mentioned, make sure to subscribe because I will then release this MCP course. And thank you for watching and see you in the next one.